Students often tell me they are reading for hours, but nothing sticks. The truth is that most of us learn to read textbooks like we read novels, line by line, eyes moving, brain asleep. But real studying is not reading. It is hunting for information. It is organizing it into a personal structure your brain understands. When you hunt, your attention is active. Your neurons fire together. You remember more. You are thinking, not just reading. Famous physicist and Nobel Prize winner Richard Feynman once said, you can know the name of the bird and all the languages of the world and still know nothing about that bird. In other words, memorizing vocabulary is not learning. Understanding is learning. In this video, we are going to use neuroscience to move beyond reading to understanding. I'm going to teach a modern take on a classic learning framework called SQ3R, survey, question, read, recite, review. When you learn to read in a way that engages your brain, your understanding and learning will soar. Before you read, give your brain a mental map. Imagine you are going on a hike. You don't just wander into the woods without a plan. You check the trail, you look at a map, you get a sense of where you're headed. Do the same thing with your reading. Look at the headings and the subheadings. Notice the graphs, charts, and bolded text. Ask yourself, what is this about? Why does it matter? How can I connect this to what I already know? What are the key ideas I should be looking for? This quick preview helps your hippocampus, the brain's memory center, create an initial schema, a mental structure that organizes new information as it comes in. Now, when you read, your brain isn't just allowing information to flow by. It knows what's important and it's hunting for it. Your attention will sharpen. This also taps into what you already know. One of the most powerful learning strategies is connecting new ideas to existing knowledge. By surveying the chapter first, you prime your brain. You activate related neural networks that help you understand new concepts and ideas. Question. Curiosity wakes up the brain. It is one of our strongest motivators. When we are curious about something, we want to know the answer. We want to learn. The best students aren't the ones who already know the most. They are the ones who stay curious, who chase understanding instead of memorizing. So how do you do this while you read? Turn each heading into a question. If you see the heading insomnia, reframe it as, what is insomnia? Why does it happen? Why is it important? The moment you ask a question, your brain flips from passive mode into search mode. You're not just taking in information, you're hunting for the answers. You are trying to satisfy your curiosity. That shift will boost your attention and increase your motivation. And here's the payoff. Your brain remembers what it has to work for. A question creates a gap in your knowledge. When you fill that gap, dopamine is released. A neurotransmitter your brain uses to signal motivation, reward, and learning. That chemical tells your brain, hey, hold on to this, this is important. When you work hard and learn something meaningful, dopamine is the reward. It literally feels good to learn. All right, let's talk about reading. Most people think reading is just running your eyes along a line of text and telling your brain what the words say. But that's not what's really happening. Reading is a marvelous trick your brain is performing and it's doing it fast. Let's start with the basics. When you're looking at a page, your eyes just don't slide smoothly like a camera panning across a scene. They jump, little rapid jumps called saccades. Between the jumps, you pause just long enough to grab the next chunk of information. Your brain pieces those chunks of information together like a flipbook animation. So reading isn't smooth. It's a staccato dance. Not every word matters. The brain learns by making meaning, not absorbing text. Focus on the big concepts behind the words. Read idea to idea, not word to word. When you read, you are engaging with the material. You are having a conversation with the author in your head. You are making annotations, explaining ideas in your own words, connecting new ideas to prior knowledge, highlighting key concepts. The goal is to interact, not just read. When I work my way through a reading, my goal is never to reread it again. 
It is to hunt and find the key information and pull it out and put it into my own understanding. But what happens when your reading material is digital? Most course readings are PDFs and printing everything gets expensive fast. That is why I use UPDF, the sponsor of today's video, whenever I am studying digital textbooks or research articles. UPDF turns passive reading into active learning. Let me show you how. First, annotation. You can highlight, draw, add comments, and write questions right on the page. These are active processing signals that strengthen the neural pathways and improve retention. Second, the built-in AI features are perfect for students. The AI can summarize and simplify the big ideas so you have that initial framework before diving into the details. And because UPDF has AI built in, you don't have to switch between apps. Another favorite feature, UPDF can convert a PDF into a mind map. I love this. UPDF can also convert PDFs into Word, PowerPoint, or Excel. That is great when you wanna build your own notes or study guides. And the OCR feature turns scanned pages into searchable and editable text. It becomes much easier to pull key ideas together. UPDF works everywhere, Windows, Mac, iPad, Android, and even a web version when you're studying the library or a coffee shop. I used to pay for an expensive Adobe subscription, but UPDF costs a fraction of the price and gives me everything I need for deep learning. One account works on up to four devices and you get a lifetime of updates and strong security. They're currently offering up to 50% off for Black Friday until December 1st. The link is in the description and pinned in the comments. All right, let's get back to the neuroscience of reading. After each section, stop reading and explain what you learned. This does two important things. First, it gives your brain time to process the information. When you take breaks, your brain begins replaying what you just studied and that replay strengthens memory. If you keep jamming new information in without pause, it's like trying to eat without chewing. You have to give your brain time to digest the knowledge. Second, reciting takes advantage of what research shows is the strongest learning strategy, the testing effect. Multiple studies demonstrate that retrieval practice or active recall can help students remember about 50% more than simply rereading their notes. And when you recall ideas in your own words, something powerful happens. You start organizing the information into your own understanding. You move from memorization to truly learning. If you cannot explain it simply, you do not fully understand it. And understanding is the whole point of reading. You have just wrestled your way through the ideas in your reading. Good. Now comes the part that most people skip. Review. What does that mean? It's like stepping back from a puzzle you just finished and realizing the picture in the box finally makes sense. Look at your notes, your highlights, your scribbles in the margins. Ask yourself, what is the big idea? How does this piece talk to this piece? What is the story the author is actually trying to tell? The brain does not store knowledge like a dictionary in alphabetical order. It stores knowledge by connections, by relationships. If two ideas shake hands, they stay together. If they never meet, one of them will get lost in the woods. When you review, even for a few minutes, you are making connections between ideas. You are telling your brain, this is important. And the brain's like, all right, I'll reinforce the wires. So write a summary, draw a diagram, Explain the reading like you are talking to a five-year-old. If you can do that, you really know it. No fancy words are required. Recite is where you grapple with the ideas, wrestle them into your mental framework, and review is where you take a step back and admire the structure. You say, ah, this is how it all fits together. And once the brain sees how the pieces connect, it keeps the whole thing ready for when you need it. It's easier to retrieve. So here's the big takeaway. Reading is not about finishing pages. It's about building understanding. It's about thinking. Your brain does not learn by watching words scroll past your eyes. It learns by working with ideas, by asking questions, and by explaining what you know. By organizing knowledge so it actually means something to you. If you follow SQ3R, you are no longer a spectator. You become an investigator, a thinker, a creator of meaning. And that's where the real learning happens. Richard Feynman used to say that the first principle of learning is that you must not fool yourself. 
And the easiest person to fool is yourself. You can trick yourself into feeling like you learned something just because you looked at the words. But when you try to explain it simply, that illusion dissolves. What remains is the truth. Either you understand it or you do not. And if you do not, good. Now you know where to focus. Your brain is designed to learn. Neurons want to connect. Curiosity wants to fire. When you read actively, you're helping your brain become the version of itself that is capable of real insight. If this helped you think differently about studying, tap the like button and subscribe so you don't miss more neuroscience-based strategies that make learning easier and smarter. And if you know someone who is struggling with reading and not remembering anything, share this video with them. It might change their semester. Remember, the goal is not to memorize the name of birds. The goal is to understand the bird. Keep calm, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next video. You got this.